Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the uh, introduction to uh, Public Health Informatics uh, 101 series. My name is Nabil Issa. I'm the Associate Director for Informatics at the uh, CSELS Division of Scientific Education and Professional Development. The objective of, the, of this course is to uh, provide you with the capability to explain the importance of informatics and IT to public health mission and to describe the function and role of the informatician in uh, support of these public health informatics practice. And last but not least is to differentiate between public health informatics and IT. First of all, informatics and IT is a wide ranging uh, discipline. It is applied in everything from space technology to uh, delivering boxes by uh, UPS. However, our focus here is really public health. So we're going to look at IT and informatics in the context of public health. So before we do this, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the public health approach. The public health approach is simple, logical, very systematic. It starts by first identifying the problem. And identifying the problem requires data collection and definition of the problem. This is what CDC takes pride of saying that they are evidence-based organization. That means decisions, interventions, science, and all the CDC product is based on a very careful data collection and, and analysis of the facts. This is what the role of sur surveillance is in the public health approach. Surveillance is about collecting information about a specific disease or condition in order to learn and understand the, uh, the problem that we are facing. Second, and after surveillance, data collection is to understand the risk factors. This is, comes from evaluating the data that we just collected in step one and to define the cause of this problem. Okay. And this is what we interpret here in CDC as the basis for epidemiology. And once the risk factors are identified, we then gonna have to evaluate intervention and establish the science and the methods that can be used in order to stem this problem, stem the spread of diseases, uh, and prevent uh, and hopefully eliminate uh, the cause altogether. Once we uh, establish the science and the, uh, uh, the methods for eliminating uh, these, this disease or, or solving the problem, we will move into implementation. Im implementation really is simply the application of the science and, uh, uh, and the methodology that we have uh, devised uh, in the real uh, in the real world, and once this is done, of course we're gonna we don't stop right here. And and this is what this chart doesn't really show you fully, is that we have to assess and repeat, because we may have to recycle back again, and then evaluate our problem until it is not there anymore. This is the public health approach. Well, public health really depends on core sciences. These sciences are. Uh, prevention effectiveness, epidemiology, laboratory, informatics, and surveillance. I'm going to start basically this chart that you see in here is not just a picture, but it, it's also directional. And it really goes counterclockwise. And I'm going to start with surveillance and informatics. Surveillance and informatics are very closely tied because both of them are about data collection, analysis, and definition of the problem that we are encountering. So that really comes as the kind of the, the basic science for uh, the, uh, the public health approach. From there, we will move into laboratories. In laboratories is where we identify risk factors. What kind of viruses, what kind of uh, bacteria, what kind of, what, 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 what is it that, what kind of, uh, uh, carrier factor that we are dealing with. So laboratory is really is important in identifying the risk factors that we're dealing with. 
Now that we have the facts, the data, and the factor, now we move on to the epidemiology. In, epidemiolo in epidemiology, we ident identify the preventive methods and science to stem the problem that we have you know, discovered through surveillance and informatics. Once the science and the methodology for intervention and prevention has decided by epidemiologists, then we'll move on into the preve uh, prevention effectiveness and the application of the science, the guidelines, uh, into uh, stemming the problem. And then we continue the cycle, as you could see, from counterclockwise. This is basically the core science that goes into uh, public health. Now we're gonna go into topic two, which is the definition and the component and the functions of informatics. The public health mission, which is, is CDC provides crucial scientific information that protects our nation against, against dangerous and costly health threat, threats. Who do we provide it to? We provide it to healthcare providers first. We give them guidelines, we give them science, we give them response strategy, et cetera, to be able to deal uh, with, the, uh, with outbreaks, with um, uh, response to emergencies uh, that affects the uh, population health in general. We also provide policy makers with guidelines on, for example, quarantine. So it is not only the health uh, care providers that uh, CDC services, but also it services the uh, the, the policy makers so could implement law that ensure the, uh, the protection of, uh, uh, of the public from outbreaks. We also provide data and information and science to the population at large uh, so they are able to, uh, to, uh, to educate them on how to implement their part of the prevention. Uh, and that could include anything on how to deal with, uh, you know, to, to, to reduce or eliminate the chances or the risk of catching flu, to, you know, eliminate the risk from, uh, you know, drinking uh, water or eating raw meat, et cetera, et cetera. So CDC addresses the public as well. CDC also provides science and information to a wide range of communities, even travelers. Travelers today, if you're going somewhere uh, on a vacation or on business, you could uh, go to the CDC website and find out, you know, what are illnesses or conditions and so on that, that are in your, at your destination and what kind of vaccines or preparations that you need to do uh, to, to protect your health. So that is one of the services that CDC provide to travelers. Um, you know, you could take the range of things. CDC also provide uh, uh, crucial uh, uh, information to, um, uh, for example, uh, during flu outbreaks, uh, even schools uh, could go to the CDC to find out, do they really need to close the schools and for how long? Now that we define the, uh, the public health mission, we are gonna define the, what is informatics so we could tie informatics and IT to the public health mission. The public health informatics is really the systematic application of information, computer science, and technology, the computer science and technology to the public health practice, research, and learning. In fact, I wanna stretch this a little bit more. This, is, this definition mostly fits the IT role rather than the, uh, exactly the public health informatician. And I would like to add that an informatician really envisions and defines the applicability of IT, informatics, sci informatics science, uh, information science, computer science, and technology to solving public health problems. Okay, let's look at the details. What we're gonna do to explain this process is we're gonna use a metaphor of building a, uh, your dream house. So you have an idea of what kind of house you really want to live in. You don't go in there and talk to an electrician about building your house. You don't talk to a bricklayer. You don't talk to a framer. You don't talk to a plumber nor a painter but they are all essential to building the house. What you do is you go into a developer or an architect and you explain to them what you really want. 
the architects know exactly you know what bricklayers do and where and when they are needed same thing with plumbers electricians and so on but they also sit down and try to understand what kind of life you really want to lead you know are, are you going to need a uh, is your mother-in-law going to live with you uh, you may need a mother-in-law suite do you have kids do you not have kids uh, and so on so your uh, you know your dream house has to uh, he, he, the, the developer and the architect has to understand what your dream house is. And then they come up with drawings and, and envisioning all of that uh, that you may aspire for and create that uh, a picture of what your house is going to look like, but they also the, the blueprints for you know the, what makes up the technical part of your uh, of the house. And that's w then the architect will communicate with the other uh, the builders, whether it's just bricklayers and so on, to start building your house. Jeez. Similarly, and to use that metaphor, if you have, you are a public health official or a professional, and you need to, you have a, uh, a need for a system uh, to help you deal with your information, collect information, analyze information, and so on. Where do you go? You don't go to the programmers. You don't go to a database administrator, you don't go to the network administrator, nor a security specialist, or even a web designer. Because first, you have to have a vision of what your system really going to do, what is it going to look like. You're going to have to talk to somebody that understand your language. But at the same time, that person also understand what can be done and cannot be done, and what is the most suitable expertise required to build your, uh, your system, very much like we explained in, the, uh, in building your house. But the informatician also needs to know more than about building the, uh, the software and the hardware for you. What they need to also know is all about the security, the data standards. There are so many other issues beside hardware and software. That the, that the public health is really not uh, even a, uh, aware of or ex, uh, have expertise in, that they need an informatician, that the person that has one foot in public health and one foot in IT to be able to uh, help you uh, determine the, uh, the design and the functionality of your system. That's what really the, this is what the, the basics for build, you know the, the or the uh, components or the the specialty or expertise or skills that is needed uh, to build your public health information application. Based on what I have uh, explained so far, we're going to take a knowledge check. Here is a scenario where we have a TB outbreak in ten states. To increase the knowledge of the health threat and inform the public and health uh, care providers about this outbreak, CDC will use a information methods that will inform the nation's population about the importance of A, research, B, health information, C, security measure. The answer to that is B, thank you. Another knowledge check, the public health informatics uses the uh, uh, public health knowledge to a, broaden the public health knowledge base through learning, in other words, to educate the public about um, the, uh, the epidemic uh, or, you know, the prevention methods and so on. B, to improve pop population health in daily practice. Uh, C, further knowledge in public health research. And D is all the above. In other words, what is really informatics is intended to do with uh, A, B, or C? Well, the answer is all of the above. Topic num number three is we're going to take a look at the basic steps for creating information systems for public health uh, use. So far, we have discussed the very basic principles of the uh, public health science and intervention. We also explained, you know, the, the basics for uh, uh, building a, uh, an, inf an information system or the role of informatics through the use of the building a house metaphor. Now we're going to dig a little bit closer 
into, into how do we really create a public health information system. We're going to start by the roles of the, of the inform, informatician. Okay? The informatician, which is in our metaphor, was equivalent to the architect, is the person that you would that you want to talk to, or the person who will go to epidemiologists, will go to surveillance uh, professionals, and uh, those who are leading uh, uh, a prevention efforts in public health, and he will try to understand what is really their needs, what is their what is the problem that they are facing whether technology has a role in helping them uh, resolve the problem and implement uh, prevention uh, effectiveness or maybe there is no role for technology in there. But this is not the developers or the, uh, uh, the database administrators and this is not their role. This is really the role of the informatician. Again, this is the person that has a foot in public health and in, I in IT. That person, after talking to epidemiologists, uh, surveillance uh, specialists, uh, subject matter experts, will try to envision and advise and provide a scenario in which technology can be effectively used to solve this problem. So they, th that person must really uh, uh, understand the, uh, the public health functions, at least from a knowledge point of view and explain to those who are making the decision the capabilities, opportunities, and limitations of introducing uh, IT to solve that problem. Well, that's not really uh, all it takes, but that person must take into consideration data security, data standards, policies uh, on collecting the data, for example, uh, uh, OMB requirements for uh, allowing even the uh, CDC to go out and collect data. So that informatician will be able to tie all of these pieces together and come up with a, with a, uh, a proposed solution to, uh, to that public health problem. One of our major objectives here is to explain the difference, the, not only just the functionality or what is needed to, do, uh, to, to, to build a, uh, a, a public health information system, but also the role of public health, the informatician, and the IT professional in building that system. This is a very congested uh, 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 slide in here. And in fact, but it's very important. And this is why there is a, uh, um, a separate copy of this slide is gonna be provided to you so you could follow up and you could use it uh, you know, um, uh, later after uh, this course. On the left-hand side, you will see that first column. It explains step one through steps five, the very, very simple, very basic steps that are necessary to take to build a public health information system. First, you have to have a vision for and a planning for what that system is going to do. You cannot just start digging the foundation and building the walls before you know what kind of dream house you really want. So step one, you have to have the vision for what is it that you're trying to, re to solve. Number two, it's most of the systems are all about data. You have to figure out what data it is that you, are that you need to understand, uh, to understand your problem and, your, and to devise a solution to it. So you have to determine what health data that you need. And once you mention data, you are almost indefinitely deciding on standard linking and integration because there is no data that is an island by itself. It is often has to be combined and integrated and linked with other sets of data uh, once it is, you know, right after it's collected. Step number three is privacy and security. That is not to underestimate what it, uh, you know, this federally mandated that information that is collected from the public on diseases or, or anything else that is collected by public health must comply with data privacy and security uh, mandates, for example, HIPAA. Uh, step number four, once you have, once you know what the vision is, you know what data you need, you know all the 
data standards and privacy and, and so on that are required and the function that you need to apply to that, now you start designing your system. And designing your system, of course, is two steps. One is to determine all the functionality on that data. What is it you expect to come in and how it's going to be processed, what's going to go out. And then once you have that blueprint for the system, then you hand it over for implementation. And that's where IT actually takes, uh, takes charge. And once you have your system and you started collecting your data and now the data is flowing, of course you're doing that for a purpose. And that is to analyze that data, to visualize that data, and to use it to make informed decisions. Now, we know step one through five, who does that? Who decides on the vision? Who decides on the data standards? Who, who develop these systems is what we try to explain in the, uh, in the right uh, three columns. So you have public health, you have inf the informatician in the middle, and on the other extreme, you have the information technology professional. And then you could see right away, without looking at the uh, yellow boxes in there, that the informatician really s has to span. He doesn't have to be a fully public health official. You know, you don't have to, you, know, you don't have to understand the public health functions and missions and practice 100%, but you have to be aware of it. This is why you will see that these yellow boxes never cross from one, one extreme to another. At the same time, an informatician doesn't really need to know technology 100%. He, he or she need to be familiar and aware of the, function, uh, of the functions uh, uh, and the capacities and the capabilities of the information technology in order to connect the public health mission with the IT solutions. So I'm not going to go into the details here, but just to explain the uh, uh, the purpose of this uh, uh, chart here because we're going to discuss the details in the uh, succeeding uh, uh, slide. Okay, well, let's start with the vision and system planning. So you, you have a public health problem. You say, I need to, I have a tuberculosis outbreak in 10 states. I need to go to the uh, to emergency department or to, you know, to uh, uh, clinics and so on, and I need to collect a uh, data on patients that uh, go through these clinics. Well, it's, uh, do you use um, um, uh, paper and pencil? You can, this is how it was done in the old days. Of course, as you know, and without going into details, this could be very uh, you know, time consuming, uh, you could only collect so much data. Once you come back home, how are you gonna consolidate it uh, and make it into uh, one big large list that you could analyze? I mean, you could have anywhere from thousands to, you know, tens of thousands of cases and, and that's not possible to do that manually uh, or on paper. So you need to figure out some other means such as hardware, for example, do you use a tablet? Do you use a, uh, a mobile device? Uh, do you use a server on the internet? And so on. Somebody has to envision that solution. Somebody has to know and piece all of these together. Software may exist. If there is a software that exists, then our problem is, uh, uh, you know, is, you know, less complex. But if software needs to be developed, we need to know, you know, the, uh, the you know, what platforms and do we write software for the, uh, um, the handheld, do we get it for the laptop, etc. Uh, and uh, not to mention the fact that we also have communication problems. Do we need to communicate that data directly? Do we have to store it and then send it to the CDC or a central place uh, uh, using flash drives, CDs? Uh, electronic, over the internet. So there are many, many scenarios and situations that, will, that you have to kind of envision uh, what kind of system that you really need uh, to tackle your, uh, your problem. And this job really is the informatician's job uh, <clears throat> who need to decide and who has to have a knowledge of the capabilities and applicability of hardware 
the functionality of the software and he has to have a knowledge of the coverage, the throughput, the geographic availability of the communication media. So we haven't gone into any details. This is very high level vision and system planning. From there, we go to the next step, which is really data. It's all about data. What data do we need to go and collect? And in what format? And once we collect data, you know, we don't want to collect data we already have. If we already have demographic data, we go in there and collect data in, about patients in certain area and we come back and then we could link it and integrate it with the demographic data we have. But to do this, we have to make sure that the data we are collecting it can interoperate and can link to other data that we already have. So if we, if we are collecting data on TB, for example, we may want to integrate and lin link this with data that we have on HIV. And if we don't use a standard methods for collecting that data and coding this data, then we will not be able to link it. So this is not something that comes after the fact. You have to think of this before you build your system and start doing data collection. Otherwise, it's too late, and you're going to miss a lot on what you can get out of that data. So health data standards and integrations are really important. Next, after we decide what data and what data standards we're going to use, we have to address issues because we, we, we don't know if we have, if we're collecting, if privacy really applies or not until we determine what data we need. So we found out that we really need to know the person's name, birth date, uh, uh, address, where they live, and so on. Well, this is a private information. That to, to handle private information uh, at the CDC, there are uh, mandated uh, government uh, requirements, there are HIPAA regulations, there are even additional uh, security and privacy issues that we really need to, uh, to address uh, before we start developing the system because they do affect the design and the development of the software what com that comes next. And there is really no compromise on data security and privacy. And when we talk about data security, we sometimes interpret it as uh, uh, in the context of privacy. But part of data security is also integrity, the integrity of that data. We don't want to collect the, wrong inf the, the, the right information about the wrong person or the wrong person associated with the right information. We, we need to make sure that this data, this data is uh, accurate uh, it is uh, when we collect it, it's not susceptible to corruption or loss because that does affect uh, privacy and security of data as well. So the quality uh, in, of, of that data is very important and needs to be addressed before we start actually designing the system because our system design is going to be impacted, affected, and shaped by all that we have discussed uh, above. Now that we know the vision for what the system is going to do and what it's going to look like and what it's going to provide in terms of uh, consume, in terms of input, and provide in terms of uh, output. We know the data security, the coding, the standards, and all of that. Now we are ready to sit down and start designing the different components for, an, uh, for the hardware that we're going to collect. It may be we may need software for handheld devices, the devices to collect the data, and we may need hardware for servers to host the data that is collected by these mobile devices. So you could see that, you know, why these previous steps are necessary to be, to be done before we get into the uh, data design and implementation. The, informat the data design and implementation, as it says, there really is two steps. One is to design the blueprint for the components that are going to go into developing that software. This is usually an informatician, a systems analyst. Can ask, this is where the uh, informatics uh, a professional has to have a good knowledge of the IT. So they don't need to implement, just like in our metaphor, the developer need to understand what bricklayers does, what the electricians do, and so on, in order to you know, uh, provide them with this blueprint for the house and the specifications for them to start implementing. 
So the first step, the definition and the design, is heavily slanted in informaticians' uh, role as well as some IT. The implementation, on the other hand, once you have the, the blueprint for what needs to be done, this is when the bricklayer and the electrician, they use these to go on their own and start uh, doing the implementation. And that's the stage which is really very, uh, uh, very informatics, uh, uh, I mean, very IT heavy. So that's system design and, and implementation. Of course, we finished our system. We collected, we, we de developed the, so the software, we tested it, we catered for all the security, for all the data standards. We started collecting the data, but we do all of this for one purpose, for eventually the final purpose, and this is to start analyzing, visualizing, and tracking that information. And that final step really is not so much IT. You may use IT tools to do this, but the visualization and the analysis of data, what if, and recognizing patterns in the data, and so on, this is really the, this is when the informatician can help, but also it's a public health function where you have statisticians and then you have uh, uh, epidemiologists and, and, uh, uh, and public health uh, uh, officials who will be using this analytical tool to do the data. With all of these five steps, we have completed a very simple public health information system. Let's take uh, an example, for example, uh, of, of an application that was developed by uh, CDC for tracking flu. FluView is one of CDC's software that gives you a clear cut way to share national influenza data. And that is really needed by the public health community, by clinicians, by scientists, and the general publics. And I would add on to this list also, um, you know, communities. Communities meaning, you know, the, the school uh, uh, administrators, as I gave an uh, example before, uh, in case we have a flu, do we need to close the school or not? And that's where CDC provide the information to make their decisions and the recommendation to make their decisions by the, uh, the school officials easier to achieve. How do we do that? Of course, here is a, a, uh, the, the way that scientific data is not easy to, you know, to understand by the general public. So this data has to be, once we collect it and we track it on a daily basis, we have to present it to um, uh, to decision makers at all level in a way that is digestible, easily to understand. One example of this and one really prominent uh, way of, uh, of presenting data are maps. And you take, for example, this is a very realistic map uh, that shows the, uh, the influenza cases uh, between uh, in the, you know, uh, 2012 and 2013. And you could see how it is very easy to look at this data and find out where is the high, uh, you know, uh, presence of uh, influenza, as you could see in Texas, in the south here somewhere, uh, up in the Midwest, and, and so on. So that is just an example of how data that is collected by CDC could be published uh, for use by a wide range of uh, users. Well, we are at a knowledge check uh, point in here. On the basis of what you have learned so far, okay, about creating a uh, information system for, uh, to, to, solve a, uh, to help solve a public health problem, which of the following does the informatician consider first when identifying technology to use for sharing national malaria data? I mean, that, that uh, flu view that you've seen, in other words, what was this, the first step taken uh, to, to develop such a system? Uh, health data standards and integration, uh, vision and systems planning, system design and implementation. Obviously the, ans the answer is B, because first you really have to have a vision to what, what the system uh, gonna look like, uh, what is it supposed to, to do, who's going to be using it, and so on, before you, uh, you know, dig deeper into the details of data standards and, uh, and development and implementation. Another knowledge check. 
the inform informatics is used to create a program such as CDC's flu view, as we showed you a very, very, very brief snippet of that. Which of the following three disciplines must work together to vi visually represent the data in an effective method? In other words, who really uh, visualize the, you know, what would you use to visualize the data? Is it computer science, epidemiology, and public health? B, technology, computer science, and applied information methods? C, technology, surveillance system, and epidemiology? This is a very tricky question that could be really interpreted in several ways. But what we're trying to say here, it's really technology and computer science and applied methodology that is used to produce, for example, the, uh, the, the map that you, uh, you just have seen. Okay, the last topic that we have is at the intersection of the informatician, the public health official, and the information technologist. It's a very interesting topic, but it's a topic that has been, and up until today, is very confusing to many people in public health. You know, where does public health start and end before informatics starts and ends, before IT starts and ends? So people are confused. Who is really the, inform in the informatics uh, uh, professional? Who is the IT professional? And who is the public health professional? We have like, you know, the, it overlaps, there is no doubt. And we feel that uh, this is long overdue that we try, we attempt to uh, explain the difference and where do these specialties really intersect. That's what really is important because it's not a clear cut. It is not a, uh, a black and white line that says, this is the public health informatician, this is what they know, this is what they do, and, and then the informatics and the IT. There is definite overlap and you will see that in the next slide. In this slide, which you already have seen, that presents the five steps for building a, uh, a public health information system, now what we're going to do is we're going to explain the yellow boxes, which says of all these steps, one to five, how much public health knowledge do we really need, how much informatics knowledge do we need, and how much technology do we need or, or is really involved in performing this step. On the vision and system planning, we need a person that has a real, that has a broad knowledge of the public health practice. You don't have to be an epidemiologist. You don't have to be a surveillance uh, professional. You don't have to be a public health uh, advisor. What you, but you need to know what they do. You need to know what are the public health practice is about, but you don't have to be a professional in there to be able to envision IT solution that solves public health problems. Um, you don't, th that person also doesn't need to be a developer, doesn't need to be a system administrator that is able to service and maintain hardware, nor that person need to, to be able to develop, design and develop software, but they need to know what the software can and cannot do. They need to know what is the difference between a server and a PC, uh, a mobile uh, device, uh, a laptop, uh, and what are they, are they good, what are the opportunities of using them to solve the, uh, the public health uh, problem. So that the, at this stage, at the, t at the the first step, which is the envisioning a system and finding out, you know, what is in technology can be used for that particular public health problem. The informatician has really, and it's not a one person problem, remember. The, this is a multidisciplinary approach. So therefore, an, if an informatician has to know a little about public health, but they have to consult and get the public health uh, officials or professionals uh, input into this process as well as the technologists because they need to rely in some details about the capabilities and capacity of the different uh, hardware and software and communication solutions. So you could see that for the first step we need a broad spectrum 
uh, of expertise that goes into defining the vision and planning the system. The next step, which is the health data standards, really goes into two, it, it has two aspects to it. One is to define, obviously, what data do we need and what coding standards do we need. Do we use ICD-9? Do we use uh, HL-7? Uh, you know, do we uh, go to health information exchange? Uh, uh, and we need to understand what electronic health records they maintain or what uh, uh, electronic lab reports that they uh, get and, uh, you know, and so on. So all of this is really not something that the IT professionals, uh, in other words, the programmers and the software developers and the system administrators and so on, they, they don't really understand what that is. They are not up to, uh, you know, uh, up to knowledge uh, as far as ICD or HL7 is concerned and so on. So this is really between the public health professionals and the informatician. But of course, you know, with some, with some, uh, uh, in fact, if I have anything to do with this, I will even shrink the, uh, that uh, yellow box a little bit and show, you know, less technology involved in this steps, uh, you know, from uh, less information technology involved in uh, completing this uh, uh, sub-step, I should say, uh, in, in number two. The second, time, the second stage of this step, once we have defined the data standards and so on, we have to design and develop the tables that are going to go into storing this data. We may have files, we may have uh, uh, what they call SQL servers that uh, consist of tables that link together with columns and rows and so on that are needed to, to receive and store our data. So this is really mostly not a public health uh, uh, professional skills, uh, required skill or knowledge. This is very much between the, the public health informatician and the IT professional. And only a certain segment of the IT professionals, which is really mostly database administrators, that are involved in determining the design of the database that is going to receive the, uh, the data uh, fields or the data columns that have been uh, decided by the uh, informatician and the public health uh, professionals. So that's the range of skills and expertise you could see here that is required to perform step two. Step three, which is really data privacy and security, it definitely takes a knowledge of the uh, health information portability and accountability act. That is not something that information technologists really understand at all. And when it comes to uh, uh, getting uh, uh, OMB uh, um, compliance uh, to, to, or permission to collect the data or determining whether this is a uh, privately identifiable information or not, it is really up to the epidemiologists, the surveillance uh, uh, professionals and the informatician to sit down and decide what data privacy, data quality, what kind of policies, uh, sharing of this data. You cannot just collect the data and put it on the, uh, on the web for everybody to see, for example. Uh, there are conditions on the, how this data is going to be used. This is not an IT issue. This is really a pub it spans the public health and then the informatics uh, domain or skill uh, knowledge. To implement, however, to implement the security, like putting user IDs, passwords, sometimes encryption, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, limitations on who can access and not access their data and so on. The implementations of security is really in the uh, IT domain, fully in the IT domain. They just simply have the key uh, uh, to the vault. Uh, it's simply the system administrators, the software developers, uh, uh, the database administrators, those are the people that have very low access to just about everything, the lowest level uh, in the, both the software and, and the data spectrum. So the implementation of data privacy, privacy and security, then once it's de decided and determined by public health and informatician, goes into the, uh, the IT uh, professionals to implement. Uh, 
system design and implementation, all the functionality that goes into the data, um, you know, the uh, uh, converting data, data flow, case definition. Case definition, as you know, it's really mostly a public health uh, uh, function. The public health officials or an epidemiologist or a surveillance uh, uh, professional will determine what constitutes a flu case. How do you identify a flu case? Um, uh, that is not something the informatician, although it looks like it's heavily uh, focused on the informatician area, it, is, it should really stretch more towards the public health. Uh, data interoperability and so on, in, in that portion of the system design really belongs between the public health and the informatician. Once the blueprints are drawn for what the data should look like and the functionality and how the data should flow and how the data should be uh, secured and accessed and so on, then it is handed over to the technologists to sit down that, who have the knowledge and expertise in managing the information, developing the system, creating the, uh, uh, the databases and so on uh, to perform that. At that stage, we are really done with the development of the system, and then we go into the vision and analysis and reporting of the, uh, of the health data. What this really requires is, this is mostly a, uh, a person who, uh, most likely a statistician, or a person that is able to um, uh, synthesize and report data. So the expertise in public health practice is definitely needed because you, we don't really know. We, we may be looking for, uh, you know, a, a specific uh, a spike somewhere in that data. For example, uh, in, in uh, certain sim symptoms being reported. So this is only can be determined by the public health uh, uh, professional. But the implementation of the logic and the software and the use of uh, systems like SAS or R or even writing customized software that is going to really require the informatician and the IT professionals to cater for these uh, special analytical uh, 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 analytical needs but when it comes to analyzing data then you really need a wide spectrum of expertise definitely public health definitely IT in case there is a specific uh, analytic things that we need to do and then it uh, the informatician straddles both the IT and the public health uh, on that. That is really the uh, the uh, summarizes basically all that we have been talking about which is the steps to uh, create a public health information and then the skill set and the competencies that are needed uh, um, the, more specifically, the overlapping skills and expertise needed across the public health informatician or informatics and the information technology. So let's summarize really the, the difference. We, we're going to have a, a, a text that you could walk away with, that you could refer to rather than going into all the details that we have uh, discussed so far, that will explain to you what is an information, uh, informatician or an informatics professional and what is an IT or a uh, professional or a technologist. Okay? Let's start with the role of the informatician in public health and you're going to notice some repetition in here but this is really a, is a snippet of text or a summary of all of the uh, 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 functions that are performed by the informatician. Of course, number one is to plan, design, and define functional requirements for public health information system. Uh, that is what we refer to as having the vision to, uh, to what is needed and how do we, uh, uh, how do we go about uh, you know, defining the boundaries and the scope for such a system. Uh, the number one is to evaluate the application and impact of information system in support of health goals. You know, they, just because we have technology doesn't mean that we have a solution. So you, you have to figure, you know, knowing, understanding and knowing the technology and being able to communicate with the technologists 
you have to be able to see is there an opportunity in using technology, what technology, when and where, and so on. Uh, the informatician also serves as a liaison between multidisciplinary team. The informatician has to be able to understand the public health language and the IT language. And there is a big divide in here. Many times in our systems is really, we spend lots of money and where systems go wrong is in the misinterpretation of requirements. The, uh, the informatician, uh, I mean, the technologists think that you said, uh, you know, football, and they developed a soccer game for you. And that is not, you know, we, we want to eliminate that misunderstanding by bringing somebody he, who, is, who is really aware of the language that is spoken by both, uh, by both disciplines. Use data standards to support interoperabil interoperability of data between systems. I mean, who is really going to be on top of knowing, for example, how do we code gender? Do, you, do we use M for male and F for female? And what do you use for other? Do we use O? Or maybe somebody says, no, 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 we cannot do that. We have to use zero and one. And null. My God, what is null really? Is a nothing, but it's a, it's a concept that uh, technologists may understand, but public health don't really relate to. Um, so there are lots of uh, data standards and, and data coding issues that, uh, that are necessary to not only get the right data, but also to be able to link and make more use, more meaningful use out of that data once it's collected and, and brought in. So the informatician is really just the right person to be the person who really understands all the data codings and standards. Ensure confidentiality, security, and integrity standards. You can't really rely on, uh, uh, on technologists, especially be today technologists are, is mostly an outsourced profession. You're, you, know, you may have a contractor working on your system today. Once it's done or even halfway into the process, this person is gone. So there is somebody that has to carry that torch. And the person who is really should be on top of the security and uh, confidentiality and integrity issue is the informatician. And the informatician also is, should be knowledgeable about health data standards, sources, and meaningful use of health data. For example, uh, uh, we know that there is a, uh, a plethora of health information exchange, and there are uh, what they call uh, health data aggregators now they are coming all over the place i mean there is electronic health records electronic lab reports uh, even social media is getting into the uh, into the health uh, data domain and so on who i mean who is going to keep track of all of all of these where where the data flows how does it flow from hospital to local health departments to state health uh, understanding their whole system uh, is really not, you know, of course the public health of, uh, in their own specific domain, the public health professionals may need to understand some of that. The IT profession, the, the technologists or the IT professionals don't really understand the health, the national health systems and where data is. There's a certain specialty in there and a uh, certain skill it takes to understand the, how the national data is collected, where it's stored, how it's flow, how it's being used, and so on. That is really the, the major role of the informatician. And now to explain the, the role of the technologist or the IT professional, which is really the programmers, the database administrators, the uh, uh, web uh, developers or designers, as we call them, uh, the communication specialists, the system administrators, all of these buzzwords in there. Uh, that are uh, that cons that make up the technologists or the information technology uh, uh, professionals. Their role really is to plan technology projects and milestones, develop software, and maintain and operate systems. They not you know they don't necessarily define the requirements. They don't necessarily define the flow or the components or the blueprint uh, for a public health uh, application, but they certainly do take that blueprint and they implement it. They develop all the nuts and bolts that it takes to make that uh, blueprints uh, work in real life. 
Uh, this is to even once the system is developed, you don't throw away the key. You still, you know, you have to operate. And the information technology specialists, they evaluate, they constantly monitoring the performance, the availability, the uptime of the uh, servers, uh, the, the throughput of the communication uh, uh, links and so on. Uh, it, lots of things that takes, uh, uh, that must happen to make sure that this system that has been developed is up and running and accessible by those people that, uh, that need it. Um, the third is really the, the designs, implements, and administer database architecture, privacy, security, and backup procedures. These are all examples of what the IT professionals do following the instructions and the specifications of the information technologist, of, of the informatician, and the public health uh, professional. So that's really, you know, hopefully. I could understand where there may be some gray areas still between a technologist and, and information uh, uh, or an informatics, uh, public health informatics specialist, but at least if you are able to see where the focus and uh, in, in their role, that will be, uh, you know, something that, that we, we, we would have achieved our purpose from this course. Okay, now a knowledge check. One of the United Nations Millennium Development Goal is to substantially reduce infant mortality worldwide. A system has been developed that will display the data and track the prog progress of attaining this goal. Which of the following professionals work with health data standards and sources and ensures that integrity and security of standards? Who is the person who really is the custodian, in other words, of the privacy and integrity of their data? It is the informatician. The information technologist may, will implement and puts the bolts. In other words, you have a, a, a GM will build the car for you. You gotta drive it. You gotta keep it safe. You, you gotta clean it and so on. If there is something broken with it, you could take it back to the factory to be fixed, but you're in a driver's seat. So the informatician will build all the capabilities for you, but there is somebody that has to have the oversight and the, uh, the control over that. Another knowledge check. Um, which of the following is not, you know, it's in capital letters, is not a function of a public health informatician? Use data standards to support interoperability of data between systems? ensure confidentiality, security, and integrity standards, designs, implement, and administer database architecture, privacy, security, and backup procedures, is knowledgeable about health data standards, sources, and meaningful use of health data. Tricky question, note the not in here. Which one of the A, B, C, D, the informatician does not do? Number C. The informatician doesn't really implement. They don't program. It is just like the architect doesn't sit down and build walls and, and put wires through the uh, walls and, uh, you know, do plumbing and, and so on. The, the architect simply draws the, 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 the blueprints and, and manages that everything is being implemented properly before they hand the uh, house to the uh, customer. You know, th this is uh, the, the actual implementation and, and ditch digging and wall building and uh, wires, uh, you know, installations and so on. This is uh, not the informaticians as we say here, as indicated here in uh, number C. Okay, so this really concludes the course. And to summarize of what we have, what I have attempted to explain to you, hopefully, one is to explain the importance of informatics to the public health mission. I think my question on this is, do you think you could really do public health today without information or information technology? Is it really possible to track, uh, you know, uh, uh, collect data, assess, evaluate, intervene, and so on, and, and disseminate the right information to uh, 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 health uh, practitioners, the public, and so on? without information technology. I think we probably somewhat uh, touched base with the fact that informatics 
and information, information technology really ought to do solve problems in public health. And we also explain the, and describe the role of informatician in public health practice. This is really a fairly new profession because we always knew public health and we, all, we always knew that they were IT uh, professionals. And somehow, somewhat, systems were very basic. You know, you, you brought a programmer and they developed some specific procedure for you. Well, information systems are getting very complex. You need a multidisciplinary IT specialty from database administrators do not program, you believe it or not. And programmers are not really that proficient in designing uh, data models and, and, and data bases. Uh, same thing with communication. There are communication specialists. Now we have information system security officers. Those are very specialized uh, profession in the IT and so on. So I, I hope that I was able to uh, explain and, and, and hopefully uh, uh, the role of the informatician and that is the person who has a foot in IT and a foot in public health. And then finally, and this is what we did in the last section in these yellow boxes, we have been able to not draw black and white lines between what is an informatics or, or informatician and what is an IT professional, but at least you're able to differentiate the roles between a public health informatics and information IT, uh, information technology uh, roles uh, or skill set. And with this, we conclude our uh, Informatics 101. Thank you for taking the time to listen to that.